Hi there. This video is going to be a preview of some of the new functionality and features that Text Mesh Pro is going to get as a result of Unity's introduction of version 4.6, where we're going to get the new uh, UGUI, uh, Canvas, UI Renderer, and Rec Transform. So let's take a look at some of the new stuff. So first things up is we now have this new thing called a rec transform, which is unlike the previous transform, which was just a point in space, a rec transform is a rectangle transform, which means it's a rectangle and it has different anchor points that we can manipulate or different handles. Um, so now, you know, we can resize uh, this area at will, which is pretty cool, and there's different guidelines that allows us to center it better, and so on and so forth. But let's take a look at what it does for TextMesh Pro. So now that we have an official bound uh, to look at, uh, we get some new alignment features. So now we're left align, uh, center align, right alignment. I'm going to skip justified because we have like just two words. But if I go back here, now we have uh, left top, left middle, and left bottom. So middle, middle would be this, okay, which is kind of cool. Um, so next thing we get, um, let me go back to the top. Um, I'm going to add more text so it's cooler to look at this. So as you can see, we have a bunch of text, and the text is, well, it's basically ignoring direct transform. So if I was to do this, you know, nothing happens. Now, if I move direct transform, obviously the text object moves around because it's anchored around it. Um, this thing here is the pivot. Um, basically, this is the center point of your transform. So if I was to leave it there and do like a rotation, for example, well, it would rotate from the location of the pivot point. So if I was to move that pivot, uh, for example, to a different location. Let me go back to this mode here. If I was to move the pivot like in this top corner and go back to rotating, now the rotation would occur from this new pivot point, which is pretty cool. Okay, so back to this. So the reason why our text is completely ignoring this transform is because we didn't tell it um, to basically use word wrapping. I'm most likely going to relabel this because um, at that point it's more like uh, the feature is more saying like pay attention to the whole rectangle now uh, where before it wasn't so now as you can see if I expand this and go like this now we have our word wrapping and it does as we would expect correct let me zoom in a little bit uh, so we can see the text uh, let's turn on the uh, underlay uh, da, 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 da. let's give it a nice little shadow here just because we can. And I was doing a test with dilate, so let me remove the dilate. Uh, increase the shadow a little bit more. Let's make it partially transparent, like this. And let's add some softness real quick. Okay, cool, much better. So, next thing is obviously all of our options for alignment work. Now that we have more than one word, uh, on screen, let's take a look at justification. So now justification, basically we want the text to be flush on both the left and the right side. So if we go like this, we can see that it's always adjusting it, which is kind of cool. Um, this control here allows us to blend between words and spacing between characters. So it's kind of nice to have like a blend in between the two. So uh, sometimes you get what they call rivers uh, through the text if you only wor use word spacing. So here I'm using a blend of the two and it makes it look a little bit better. Um, so the next thing is, before I forget, so uh, character spacing obviously is respected here. So we can adjust the spacing between the characters. Uh, let me go back to zero. Whoops. I was changing line spacing here. I may as well do it. So we can adjust uh, the spacing between the lines. Uh, font sizing, well, I can size the font to anything, and now we're going to observe, hey, look, the text is, uh, like here, going outside this rectangle again. Um, so let's take a look at another cool feature. Let's go back to 36. Um, one of the things I've added, it's still being developed, is, and it's not going to be hidden in a debug panel, but now I can turn on masking. So if I go masking hard, uh, so it's going to be a hard mask. Now, if I was to take the bottom here, as you can see, well, actually, I never showed that. 
and let's go mask off. So if I move the transform here, you can see that the text, um, like here on the right side, we still play with uh, word wrapping and so on and so forth. Let's go back to left justify though. So we can see we're still doing a word wrapping, but when the text exceeds the area of the box, then we can still see it go through. This is where the masking option comes into play, where now whatever pokes outside of the area will get masked. And we have two types of masking. We have the hard masking and then we have a soft mask. Um, so now you can see it's a soft mask, it's a tiny little line, and I can play with this amount of masking that you're getting. Um, right now the mask boundaries are set automatically by the rec transform uh, with softness. Uh, I'm not sure yet how to implement it in terms of not technically but behavior, um, which is do we want the softness to start at the edge and expand outside, which means some of the text would sneak outside the rectangle as it gets dissolved or softened out or faded out. So I don't know yet, you know, what you guys will prefer, but basically, you know, here's what softness does, right? It softens uh, the whole thing. Um, so now I'm using like a tiny softness right there. Actually, I'll set it to five. And now as we go around the edge, we can see it vanishing. So let's play with that a little bit more. So if I was to expand the box out, go like this and change the font size, now we can see that as the text grows beyond, it basically gets masked, which is kind of cool. Um, and again, same thing with character spacing, everything you know works as you would expect it. Uh, the next feature, um, is it would be kind of cool if the text, and, and let me re-describe this. Um, I have an auto-sizing feature which would basically scale the text to fit the box. Um, there's people who've been asking for that and here it is, I'm supplying it. The only question I have, it's more from a design point of view, um, if you use auto-sizing, then your text from one text object to the other will basically be all different. Um, meaning if it's sizing to the maximum size, so one area is going to have a certain point size, the other one's going to have a different point size, and you're going to end up with objects of all different si point size everywhere. Um, that might be acceptable uh, to you guys, which is why the feature is there, but you know, I'd be curious to get people's feedback on that. So as you can see here, as I resize this, um, if you pay attention, let me expand this a little bit here. If you watch the point size right there or the font size, you can see that it's rescaling um, as I move around. So if I was to shrink here, you know, it's getting super tiny and I can go back to here and now it's getting much bigger. So auto sizing is in place. Now you may notice or may have noticed that if I zoom in, uh, let me disable that, by, it's not zoom in, but if I increase the point size quite a bit, the text becomes soft, and if I go far away, then it gets too crisp. And that's basically, we're still missing one feature um, in regards to Text Mesh Pro for 4.6, which is the UV2 channel. Um, and we use UV2 to pass scaling information to our shaders. So because we don't have that right now, I don't have a way to pass appropriate scaling, which is why the font doesn't look as good as it uh, would be able to. Now, keep that in mind when I'm saying it doesn't look as good as it should. Um, you know, still looks, you know, mighty fine, uh, but we want it to look even better. Uh, right now, um, if you're paying attention, I'm using the, well, I guess another side note is using the, uh, right now I'm using Text Mesh Pro with the new UGUI Canvas stuff uh, and the UI renderer. Um, the UI renderer, unlike the old renderer, doesn't take a material or any of this stuff, or at least doesn't expose it, which means there are there is no material panel anymore. So all these things, the material stuff, is all rolled into one larger inspector. Uh, that's not complete yet, but this is roughly where it's going to be, and you'll be able to pick whatever version of a shader you're going to use. And the reason I just said all of that is I'm using the mobile GUI shader right now. Um, and it does not support texturing. 
uh, and yet it appears like I have a texture on the face of my characters. Well, I'm actually using the vertex colors uh, to create a gradient. So each quad has four vertices and basically I have yellow on the top two and orange on the bottom two and it creates a nice blend between those. And that's a feature that has been requested. Uh, I just need to figure out how to implement it in the UI. Right now the gradient's hard-coded uh, just so I could make the stuff look pretty. So that's it for this video. Um, hopefully I didn't forget anything. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post. Uh, personally, I'm pretty excited about the new forthcoming changes in 4.6. Um, so it's going to be pretty cool. So thanks for watching.